Hello everyone, welcome to Protected Trust Live. My name is Steve Goodman, Training Coordinator at Protected Trust, and joining me yeah, joining me today is Jake <laughs> Heitz, our, uh, one of our uh, support desk engineers, and uh, today he's going to be helping me talk about one of the latest features to come out in Teams, which, I don't know, would you call it a feature? Or I, I mean, I guess it's a feature. Well, anyway, big news, you can now do uh, or have external users uh, communicate with you on Teams. And um, that's, I guess Pete, we should back up and kind of describe what Teams is. We, we kind of try to do it each time. I know John <laughs> Webster wants me to have him on so he could do an, a, a better job of explaining what it is. But it's a communication platform that I know we use internally that has replaced our internal email. Um, we still have email internal, internally for some yeah, things, but we um, are really relying on Teams to do all of our communications. Uh, just because it keeps the conversation history easily. Multiple people can join into the conversation. Um, but the only problem was if you wanted to have someone who's outside of your organization have the conversation with you, you then you'd have to rely on email, yeah. which is something that I think Microsoft is trying to get rid of. Or not get rid of, but diminish its role. Um, you know, For everyone who's been watching the previous live streams, we've do, been doing a lot of them about security. Um, and really email is one of the biggest ones to really come into your organization and mess all the things yeah. up <laughs> you know, with phishing Definitely. attempts and <laughs> ransomware. A lot of that's due to the email. Um, but with Teams, um, they have a lot of options to make sure that the right people are getting in and it's really hard to, <laughs> to have yeah. someone, an external user, come in who wasn't invited. In fact, I don't know of a way for an external user to come in who's not invited. Um, so what I thought we'd do is uh, demonstrate how to get an external user into a team. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to quickly show on my side uh, how to enable uh, that in your organization. Um, so for our clients, this is something that they would call in, call in and have us do. But if you're not a client of ours or if you feel like uh, you want to do it yourself, <laughs> uh, then you would go into your admin portal and you would, or the admin center, I guess they call it now, and you go to settings and click on service add-ins, and then you just choose the one for Teams. And so we want this to be for guest users, and then you would just flip that switch on. Uh, by default, it is in the off position. And I pretty found, easy. yeah, pretty easy to do. Um, so what I found was when you uh, first implement this, um, it happens, I think, almost instantaneously, but I've had to completely exit out of Teams in order to get external users to, to, to send the invite to external users. So you try to send it after turning it on and it wouldn't... Right, it wouldn't, it wouldn't know who you're talking It would yeah. say, this person isn't a part of your organization. You're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's the that, point. That's, that's the whole point of it. This. <laughs> so um, once you do it, tell your users to you know completely close out of it. I mean, and I don't just mean... Uh, clicking the uh, X button. You have to go to your system tray and completely exit out of Teams. Not that we're going to show you right now, but that's what you would do. So uh, I made a test team in a test environment, and I wanted to show everyone um, just how easy it is once you flip that switch, or once the admin flips that switch, um, how easy it is. Um, so I went ahead and created a uh, live stream team. Right, and so I already added the member um, just because there can be some a delay once you create the team. So I didn't want that to happen live on the stream. So we went ahead, did it, but yeah. we'll retrace our steps um, to, to show what I did in order to get it to work. So the first thing I did was go to um, the join or create team option. And you really got to click on that. <laughs> All right, and so we'll be given this thing called create a team. We'll click that. And let's just go ahead and create a team because this is a test environment. So we'll call it, I don't know, live stream two or electric boogaloo, something, <laughs> something good. Uh, and you can make it private or public, and it is exactly what it says. Private, only team members can view it. In public, anyone in your organization can view it. So we'll click that. All right, so now here is where you would add your team members. 
Um, so in order to add an external user, all you need is that user's external email address. So the one we're going to add is ptrust.guest at gmail.com. And yep, we'll click on them. And then before we do anything else, um, you, if you want this person to be known as something other than their, um, I guess that's my display name, Ptrust, yeah. I guess, or my email address, you would have to make this change right here, which is to edit the username. Um, and so I guess we would just call this person uh, Captain America, <laughs> just because I watched the movie recently, and that's fresh in my head. <laughs> Uh, and so then we would just add the user, and now he is part of my team. Uh, so that's how we did it for the first live stream, not live stream two. So what I'm going to do is show uh, my computer and show uh, what the end user experience is like. Um, so like I said before, we, w we already went through this we, for live stream one, um, and I got an email. See, this is a Gmail account, totally unrelated to this Contoso organization. Um, and it says, I have been added by someone. Alex is the profile we use to add it to Teams. And I have a choice now to, I guess, my only choice yeah, is to open that's Teams. That's the only option. Uh, so I'll do it again. And I can open the app in my web browser, but I'll also have an opportunity to um, do that for, what what I just say? <laughs> you can open it in the web browser. Or I can, can open it in my app. web browser or I can <laughs> uh, download it, or download the actual Teams application. But uh, right now I'm just going to use it in my web browser. So here it is, a total Gmail user for everyone who's used to having a Teams account. Uh, it looks exactly the same. Um, I can't think of a feature off the top of my head. Maybe feedback is missing and the store is missing. Oh, yeah. Um, but other than that, I can go to my team. And here's the live stream. We uploaded some. Here, well, here, let me give you a. Hi. <laughs> and we'll switch views to show what it's like for everyone. So on the left is the organizational team owner, and then on the right is the guest and we can have a conversation. So you can choose to reply. Interesting conversation we're oh, having yeah. here. Riveting. Uh, <laughs> I saw you uploaded the docs. Thanks. And maybe I'll even send him a thumbs up GIF. <laughs> Just the extra features. Oh, this is a good one. I like that one. That's a solid game. <laughs> so if you go to uh, files now, you can uh, show everyone all the important documents that we are working on together in collaboration. It is marketing. Yeah, why not? We'll choose marketing. Everyone, everyone loves Excel, right? Oh, yeah. And you'll click edit file, and then I myself will also open the exact same file. And I'll choose to edit this document in Teams. Again, I don't, maybe I don't, I'm a, I'm a Gmail user, right? Yeah. I, don't, I don't have Microsoft, but look, I, I'm, I'm in Excel and I can, I don't know, <laughs> maybe Excel's not the best one. Do you know how to, <laughs> I mean, I can input data, but all I know how to say is, hello, how are you? <laughs> so not really using Excel to its fullest potential. Not even close. Yeah. But uh, as you can see on um, both screens, the, it's happening instantaneously. We're collaborating in real exactly. time. So even though uh, I may be at home sick with a stomach virus, like some people we know, That's true. <laughs> they, it doesn't they, happen. <laughs> they, could, they could still be um, working just fine um, in collaboration mode. <laughs> uh, and the reason why you would use collaboration mode is because uh, one, you can work on it together, and you don't have to pass back and forth the same document in an email. Because um, again, remember, we're trying to get rid of email here. We want we want a secure environment. We want um, we don't want to create a whole bunch of um, backlog of data when one document will do. 
Yeah, so exactly. we can work on it together. There's something called versioning, which if, if, if I'm working on this document or you're doing it solo and you make a change and I see it later and I don't like what you, you just did, roll it back. I'll just roll it back to the date and time that I, that I want the document to be in. Um, I think another important thing to demonstrate in Teams is if I could go back to my guest user's team, is that even though I am, I've been invited to a team, um, but let's say I wanted to talk outside the team. So I could pull up a private conversation with Alex Wilbur only because he is a member of the team. So that means none of the other teammates can see it. We're having a, a private chat. Um, and so the reason why I say none of the other teammates can see it or the reason why I'm showing this feature is because this organization itself has uh, like I think 50 users this test environment maybe more but I can't look them up in this global address list only the people who are in that specific team right I can only up. communicate with the people who are part of my team so that goes back to the security thing like you can't just invite someone from the outside and then all of a sudden it opens up access yeah. uh, I'm, I'm limited to only that team or the people who are inside that team and it's just a great way to you know share documents and collaborate with each other and get rid of email. You know, a lot more secure, a lot easier to it's access. Definitely easier. <laughs> um, more immediate as well when you have that in, that right exactly. collaboration. And there's you know there's phone features. You could share your screen with me if you wanted to. Uh, we may save that one for a different. Yeah. I mean, there's, <laughs> there's so many. To that, so. Teams has so many features that it'd be hard to just do, you know, in a 15 minute live stream I think we'll we'll do like segmented videos on like step one yeah. open up teams <laughs> that, that'd be one video um, but yeah I from my perspective teams has been a real game changer in our office I think so for sure I mean people have always said you know um, this product will change the way that you work and we found that once we actually started using it uh, that's exactly what it did um, so hopefully with now the entrance of external users we could bring on more people from the outside to also use Teams. I think that'd be a great tool for that too because we, we always talk about how great it is. And they're like, <laughs> oh, okay, that's interesting. Then no one uses yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so maybe if we create a team and then um, have people join it from the outside and then we'll just show them all these neat little things from there, that, that may be a good one. Yeah, there's a lot of times where you have to, you know, just like you would internally, send documents back and forth through email. You need to do that with external users as well, so to be able to do it in one place yeah like, like we've been talking a lot about um, in the previous live streams how like just how quickly one document can explode yes. from like <laughs> uh, from a couple megabytes into taking up gigs of data because <laughs> it's the same document being forwarded being replied back to and it just it gets amazing. out of hand it gets out of hand really quick so if you're a user of slack um, you're you'd be use this like almost without any hesitation it's, it's very mean, similar very similar to slack and it's got gifts yeah I mean, that's, what, that's, that's <laughs> the only reason people would use Slack, right? So. Um, and Jake was telling me before the live stream that, you know, it, you, don't, you don't just have to limit yourself to um, the team you're in. You can also segment it out by the channels. Yeah. Um, because you're not just talking about one topic in a team, right? You have several things going on. Um, and there's no limit to the amount of channels you can create. So if one thing's going to be about... Um, support cases or I yeah there's a lot of like we have a support team and then within the team we have various channels for different topics that we need to deal with in support because not everything in support can just fall into one giant bucket with everyone talking about a million different topics at the same time so channels are really helpful to break that up yeah to break it up so then that way you don't look at a long string of information yeah um, and then a uh, final thought for me is that this works with um, uh, DLP uh, data loss prevention so a lot of people may be worried about like oh but what about um, you know people saying something that they shouldn't like they enter in a social security number yeah, I would not know. well I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need John on this live stream <laughs> to help me out with this but uh, that's built in with uh, teams so that you don't go giving out the information you shouldn't be um, so it helps protect in that sense too um, so that's all I wanted to show for today's stream any final thoughts um. I mean, I, I know that when when I first looked at Teams, when they, like Microsoft first released it, we weren't using it exact that much at the time. But mm -hmm. once I once people actually stopped and like looked at it see, and saw what it could do, um, I think I think it was literally a, a single day where everyone's like, "Hey, look, actually try to use Teams." And then once everyone did that, 
I think from that point on, it was everyone was using Teams. That's that a good one point. Day. Because there were diehard users who yeah. were like, I use Skype. Yep. That's my chat client. I'm not going to use anything else. And then they finally they finally use Teams for a day, and they're like, okay, I don't. Yeah, need, I don't. I, need, I haven't. I'm not using it anymore. I haven't opened up Skype um, in a very long time. Me neither. To be honest, no. And um, and email, I only check for because I don't use it. Cause exactly. Because I, I know I'll get a response immediately in Teams because that's what people are checking. Yeah. Out. You get a, you get a pop up notification that someone messaged you or that you got mentioned, and you just click on it, and there you go. Yeah. And I, and I guess in another live stream, we'll show you how to turn that off. Yeah, turn it, it off. could be annoying, I guess, for Because you can people. get it on your phone each time yeah, you get a message, yeah. and then your That's phone just vibrates me, until the battery's dead. <laughs> uh, but that will be another live stream. So thank you, Jake, for walking mm -hmm. us through this. No problem. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. If you like our content, please click the Like button or the Subscribe button if you want to be notified each time we post a new video or live stream. And also thank you to our clients who make these videos possible. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.